director of photography, Alec Watson, and this is the last in the series of videos. In this one, I am going to show you how to make an action. And the reason you want to be able to make an action is to do shortcuts of things. So I'm gonna give you my personal kind of uh, retouching setup that I use on portraits all the time. And I run an action to do that. I'm gonna show you both of these in this video. Let's start with taking a large portrait image into the edit suite. Let's just go ahead and fix the color temperature immediately. We'll click that and um, generally if somebody's wearing white, we'll get close enough that well, that's a little bit overly warm. There's, there's brighteners and things in white clothing, so you can't always get a white balance, but certainly you can, you can dial it in enough. And so that, that's what we've done there. That, that looks a whole lot better. On a portrait, there's a bunch of things that I do with dodging and burning and saturation all the time. And of course, I, and I've mentioned this before, we can do dodging and burning over here, but I do it a different way with curves layers because curves and masking gives me a whole bunch of control that I can go in and do stuff and it's completely reversible. And it takes a little time to set this up. So let me, let me just show you how this would work. So I would drop a curve layer on top of this. And this one is going to be specifically for highlights. So I'm gonna take an area of high highlights and I'm gonna make it way too bright. There we go. When I make a curve, I don't want it, see this, this would be a straight line here, it's not, no longer a curve. I, wanna, I want it to, oops, let's undo that. I want it to brighten up, but always leave me with a curve. So that's our brighten curve. And we're gonna go ahead and invert that mask. When the mask becomes black, it turns it off. If we paint white on that, it will start to show. That, that may or may not make sense in a minute. I'm gonna go ahead and rename that. The goal, the goal with this one is, if I, let me zoom in a little bit. Let me go ahead. If I wanna put some highlights into her hair, I would take a brush And I always check, put my flow at about 20%. So that means I'd have to go over something a lot of times. And I'm just gonna brush some highlights into her hair. What you'll find is where it's putting this in, it's gonna make a little gray line over on the dodge section. And if I turn this on and off, you're just like, are you even doing anything, Alec? There we go, it's subtle. If I wanna make it less subtle, I can turn my flow up. I could do that and now I've got a whole bunch of shine in her hair. It, for me, it's, it's too much, but one of the things that's great about this technique is you could swap to black and paint some black back because you're just like, oh, I made that a little too much. Let's just back that off and we can take it the other way. There we go. So this becomes my dodge layer. So I do a dodge layer, a burn layer, uh, and a, a saturation to make something more saturated, and a desaturation layer. And I can go through and I can build these layers, which I'm gonna show you. But before I do that, I'm gonna show you how to make an action. Because if I do this as an action, I only have to do this once, and instead of manually making these every time, which I'm gonna show you how to do when we do this action, I can just click one button, I can play my action, and boom, it does it all for me on my next set of images. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna delete. Let's go ahead and delete this. We'll delete that layer. Heck, I'm even going to delete this layer here. We're gonna go back to the start because if I think about this, I can go, Alec, you know what? You could make this an action because you do this all the time. I'm gonna record a new action. Now it's gonna record all the settings that I do. So I go down here, I'm going to click on white balance. I'm not actually going to change the white balance because I don't need to record that for my new template. And then I'm going to add a curves layer. We're gonna make it a highlight and we're gonna amp it up so it's still a curve and doesn't have a flat spot. We will call this, I'm gonna rename that to dodge. Now I'm gonna make another curves layer. 
This one is going to be in the shadows and again make sure it's a curve and doesn't get flattened out. That makes everything really dense and contrasty. This one is going to be renamed to burn. I'm going to make a vibrance layer where I crank on the vibrance. We're going to call this add saturation. And I'll make one more vibrance layer. We're going to turn it down and we're going to rename it desaturate. And our image is looking awful. Last thing I'm going to do is go through and invert these masks. Invert mask. Invert mask. Invert mask. Invert mask. Okay, I have now inverted all those, so I'm back to that portrait look, and I'm going to save this into the category of portrait. Okay. Now, before I go and do this, I am just going to go back. I'm going to discard this one, and it'll be like working with a brand new image. I'm going to go back. I'll take this image. And it's like I'm going in for the first, I'm just going to show you that if I was doing this for the first time, rather than manually go through all that again, I can now do this for every image just like this. I can go up to play and I go into portrait and portrait retouch setup. Boom! All the things that I had manually set up are now ready for me to go. Let me show you how these work. So let's now use the dodge. I'm going to take my dodge layer, I'm going to take a white brush, and I'm going to paint a little bit on her hair, maybe a little bit on her face, her top. I'll make a really big brush, a little less feathered, and I'm going to take it down to 20%. I'm going to go over her outfit really quickly. There we go. There's a whole bunch of brightness there. That, that changed things dramatically. Now, one of the things that I've mentioned, rather than using dodging and burning, if I decide now that it's just like, oh, that was maybe a little heavy handed, I can switch that back to black, split the difference on flow, and paint back a little more shadow detail. There we go. Split the difference. I'm, and I'm just doing a really quick, quick job here. Let's, it's a little heavy handed just in the top of her hair. Uh, burning, same thing. I often like to do a little bit of a burn around somebody's neck, a burn brush, and just burn in around the neck and usually around the sides of the face, just a smidge. Now that seemed a little bit heavy handed. So I can either paint it back or one of the things that's great about this that you couldn't do in dodge and burn is I could just change the opacity on that and it's just like, oh, there it is right there. I can also use this same effect, make this really big and make a soft vignette. I can just a little zip through the corners around her. I can make a soft vignette around her by painting in through the top corners. There we go. We'll go let that catch up for a second. There we go. Let's check that out. Subtle vignette. We can, we can dig it in a little further if we wanted to make it a little more spotlight. Or if, you, if you really want to see it, we can just take our flow up and then boom, there we go. Now it's more like a, a spotlight uh, effect. I've got really controlled light on her. She's starting to really pop in 3D. Adding saturation, you know, maybe our background, we want that to pop uh, a little bit just around the edges of her hair and that'll bring a little extra pop of color just into the hair edges as well. There we go, boom. And desaturating, one of the places that I tend to desaturate, though her, um, her teeth are about as white as white gets, uh, very often you'll find that desaturating teeth, because one of the things that's interesting about teeth is we may think, you know, oh, retouch and we just wanna brighten them. Here, let me take that down. Let's take her up to 100%.
And let's get that smile. You would think that you just want to brighten teeth like Dodge, but you actually want to do, if you're going to dodge teeth to make them brighter, you got to make sure that they are white. So I am just going in and desaturating just on the teeth. And by doing that, then when you go to whiten them, because if you, if you white slight, just if there's even a hint of color, as you brighten it up, they end up with bright yellow teeth. So from here, and, and not that I would brighten her teeth anyway, but I would go back to the dodge and I would dodge on her teeth. Uh, as I said, she's already got really bright white teeth. I would probably not do that in this case. I just wanted to show you how I would do that. Same, same with eyes. When you go in on somebody's eyes, you probably want to do a little bit of desaturation. And again, if, I, if I'm looking at and I made the whites too big, I can still go back and pull, pull back a little bit. If I decide I've made that purple pop too much with saturation, I can go ahead and pull that bit back a little bit. This layers setup gives you really fantastic control over portraits. And of course, it, it's going to work for your scenics if you're uh, shooting wildlife, fantastic for wildlife, creating a, a sense of depth. This is my go-to standard for almost all the retouching that I do. And you can build that as an action. When you come up with your own techniques, add them into the action. It works great. That finishes off our second series of 10. I hope you've got something out of this and it's raised the bar on post-processing on your photography. Uh, taking great photos, you know, it's hard to beat a great photo to start with. But when you start with great photography and you raise the bar in post with really great post-processing, wow, your pictures are up here and fantastic. I would love to see what you're doing. Share them, share them with the world, share them with, with us. Tag me on social, I'd love to know about what you're doing. Make the world a better and more beautiful place. I'm Director of Photography, Alec Watson, and I hope I have been of some assistance. Yeah.